Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to Global Fire Alliance, our weekly Facebook live program in which we are uh, talking about kingdom culture values. We're talking about revivolution. We're so glad that you guys have joined us in, in this effort to change the world one encounter at a time. We want to encourage you. We want to equip you. We want to resource you you know, empower you, activate you into a revival lifestyle because our world needs us to, to be going after the kingdom and to release the kingdom wherever we go to whoever we meet. So we're excited today. Thanks for joining with we're us. So excited to be here. We're going to be talking about releasing joy. So in again, release joy by putting in the Facebook chat, your name, where you're from. If this is your first time, or if you were here before, we want to know and our coaches want to encourage you. So welcome, welcome, welcome. welcome. So we have we have coaches with Global Fire Alliance who are just waiting as well to meet with you after this Facebook Live on our Zoom community. Yes. So you're going to get a Zoom link uh, during this Facebook Live to join with us for revival groups with our uh, Zoom community with Global Fire Alliance. So we're excited to be with you this morning. And uh, we've been talking about like the, the the way we've encountered revival during our Christian experience and yes. all the movements that God has brought us through. And and last week we we talked to everybody about the presence of God because in revival, what we want to experience and what we want to release is the presence and power of God and signs and wonders and miracles, equipping the saints to heal the sick, to prophesy over people, the good plans and purposes that God has for their lives. Yeah. And so we thought it would be good as we're launching into this Facebook Live to focus on how the power of God actually is generated and it's yeah. generated through the presence of God. Yeah, it, it's amazing how when we are in a situation where where we experience something together, like whether it's like going to Disneyland or, or doing something fun or worshiping and you're experiencing together, there's something that's released. Well, when God is with us in his presence, there's something that's released. And so that's, that's what encounters do. And so, you know, the coaches right now are going to be sharing about joy encounters that they've had in the Facebook, because this is all part of how we grow. I mean, we can't grow without joy. I mean, can you imagine a little baby coming in the world and never smiles, but it's us releasing joy to that child that causes them to grow. And that's what God has done in our lives that we want to impart to you and talk about today. Well, the Bible says that in his presence is fullness of joy. Come on. And Come on. in, you know, Romans 14, 17, Paul describes the kingdom of God as righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So in the Holy Spirit are righteousness, peace, and joy. And that is the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God is the Holy Spirit. And in the presence of God, the Holy Spirit is righteousness, peace, and joy. So joy is a huge factor in not only encountering the presence of God, but then releasing the presence of God. Yeah. And, you know, I I've, I've found that if I center upon what Jesus thinks about me, when I center upon joy in the moment, it releases joy to other people. Well, it's yeah. like it's contagious. And so um, it's so cool. And we do have some shout outs. So I just wanted to say, welcome <laughs> Vicky from Alaska. Yeah, Vicky. Wow, the coaches <laughs> want to give you some joy bombs right now. Uh, <laughs> Jessica from Oregon. Yay, Come Jessica. On. We're so glad. Anybody else that's joining, we'd love to know your name and where you're from. So uh, speaking of changing the atmosphere with joy, you know, a lot of people think that joy is just joy, but <laughs> that's more like peace or, you know, like Spock eyes joy, right? Like of the old Star Trek, like no emotion whatsoever. But God actually made us with emotions. The whole right side of our brain, the relational side of our brain is actually designed to, to experience feelings and, yes. and, and emotions that God created us with that he said is good. And, and so joy is, is one of those parts of the way God made us to experience life. And laughter yes. is the natural expression to joy, just as crying is to grief or pain, right? And so he's turned our mourning into dancing and our sorrow into joy. joy. And that's the messianic 
promise that Jesus brought with the good news of the kingdom of God, which is great joy for everyone. And so laughter is part of this. And I'll never forget one time I was driving in, in my car and I was late for an appointment and I hit every red light, like seven in a row. And I'm like, just so just getting overwhelmed. And, and the Lord says, Hey, you know, that laughter thing, why don't you just try to practice that right now? So I turned my rear view mirror towards me because I don't like to drink alone. And <laughs> what I mean by that is drink in his presence. And so I was laughing with myself and and I'm in the car laughing hysterically because otherwise I'm going to probably sin. <laughs> so I look over after about 10 seconds and this woman who's next to me and both of our windows are up and she can't hear me, but she's looking at me and she's cracking up. She has no idea what I'm laughing about, but my joy, my laughter actually influenced her. And now she's laughing and I'm sure I made her day in some way. Oh my gosh, it's, <laughs> it's so true. I mean, I'll, I'll never forget. I was uh, in a, I was in Texas. Becky and Jim was from Texas. I could see you saying yay. And I was speaking, and we were taking people out into the marketplace to touch people. And we went into this barber shop, and I had about ten people in this little teeny barber shop, right? And they're getting prophetic art cards. Or I mean, people are getting wrecked by by what they're receiving and there's this barber with this marine and this marine goes well who who are you guys why are you here and you go oh we just love to hang out with you and share the good news of joy and he goes well you're not like any other christians i know you're happy and i go wow that's changing the atmosphere and the Come barber on. got healed he came to church the next day i mean there were so many miracles because of joy that was manifested through us. So it's fun. Yeah, I, I've found, and so is Teresa, especially in, in, in our revival culture at Bethel Church, that we've seen so much of the power of God released through joy, through laughter specifically. I remember when we first went to Bethel in 2002, and Bill Johnson was teaching us all about the power of, of laughter and joy, because laughter is like good medicine, right? And so I was one of these guys who like, well, what's the point? Who made the joke? And these people are laughing without any aid of a joke. And, and I'm thinking, where is this in the Bible? But how many of you know there are things hidden in Scripture that we oftentimes read over and gloss over and until we get a Waldo encounter, like you see Waldo on the page, so to speak. It, we just read over things and we don't realize how much joy is in the Bible, Yes. And how much laughter. I mean, Jesus in Luke chapter six, verse 19 promised, happy are those who weep now before the kingdom comes for when the kingdom comes, they will laugh. And that's over and over. That's a future tense verb, which has a continuous sense. They will laugh over and over and over again. And unfortunately, a lot of people like I used to, I had like relegated laughter to when we die and go to a place called heaven, instead of encountering heaven within us, the kingdom of heaven is within us, Luke 17 says. Jesus taught the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So when is the time to laugh? Now, when the kingdom Come comes. So, so, But I didn't then. understand this at the time. And Teresa <laughs> and our son, Chad, they're, they're laughing and they're on yes. the floor in a dog pile laughing with other people. And, and then they're getting up and they're healing everything and prophesying. And I haven't seen any breakthrough in six <laughs> months at this time. Like, like nothing. And I hadn't prayed for the sick in 23 years also. I know. It's crazy. So, so I'm watching these guys laughing and, and I'm like, hmm, where's that in the Bible? And where, how, how is that helpful? And the Lord says, well, do you want to prophesy over everything and heal everybody? And I'm like, yeah. He says, well, then you better jump into my joy because that's where the power is. So I jumped in, laughed and and I couldn't stop laughing. And then that night we did this ministry team thing at our service. And this guy brought up his mom in a wheelchair. She had cataract. Uh, she was getting ready for cataract surgery the next day. She couldn't read a thing. Oh and uh, I just laughed over her because that's all I could do at that point. And there was no formula or technique. I just laughed over. Her. She got completely healed. And that was my first miracle. This woman completely healed, couldn't see anything, got healed as I just laughed over her for about a minute. And so I've just been laughing ever since for the last 20 years. He even laughs in his sleep. <laughs> Um, but what's so cool, guys, is like, um, I mean, the reason why we're in this house right now that we got this house is because 
it seems so overwhelming. And so I turned to Kevin, we need to laugh over this situation. Yeah. He goes, I don't want to laugh. I go, well, that's why we need to laugh. And so we <laughs> yeah. went to a, a little, Thanks um, for sharing on the <laughs> <laughs> we went to a lake and we just laughed because it was impossible. And that night by God's miracle, we had healed this couple um, that we didn't even know before. I'm sorry, this, this woman of cancer and she had, and, and again, this is like a fluke story. And the admin to the real estate agent, as they're talking about who's going to get this house is you have to give it to this, this um, couple. And it's now our house. And it's because we yeah. laughed over an impossible situation with the joy of the Lord. Yeah. I mean, we, we'd healed this woman, you crazy. know, a couple of years in advance, Yeah, just as we were laughing over her. And so then when we get the house, we're, we're, we're putting in an offer for the house with 50 other people and our they're, offer they're, even isn't like near no, the top. No, they're going through it and they're like, wait a minute. I know this couple, they healed my mom of cancer. And so that's how we got this house. Yeah. Oh so my gosh. I want to, I want to also then we just, talk, have, we oh, just have ahead. a couple shout outs and then I'm going to have, we'll have Kevin continue. Um, Irene from Oceanside. Welcome Woo! Irene. I love it. Kelly Chu from Pasadena. Hey, Kelly. Kelly. So glad you're with us. Carol Joy from New Jersey. Carol Joy. Come on. So glad to have you. Um, and we love that that joy is part of your name. Uh, <laughs> Lorenzo in Miami is back. Oh, Lorenzo. Lorenzo. So I've been here every time. Uh, Jessica Hunter says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Come on, Jessica. Yes. And, and so I want to talk. Well, let me just address that one too real yeah. quick you know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Actually, it's our empowerment, like strength. It's not, we're going to lift more weights, but, <laughs> but the joy of the Lord is our empowerment. Like the power to live the Christian life comes from joy, not from mourning and grieving and sadness and pain. I mean, pain might last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And so oftentimes he turns our M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G into M-O-R-N, ing like joy comes in the morning and that becomes the empowerment that we need to live the christian life yeah. but it also empowers the kingdom of god to do what is intended to do and so when when we're releasing joy we're releasing the presence and power of god into the atmosphere to change the impossible and so yeah. along with that you know psalm 126 was yeah. was written in connection with that scripture in Nehemiah chapter eight, the joy of the Lord is our empowerment. And the Psalm 126 says, when the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, we were like men who dreamed again and our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongues with songs of joy. And then the nations looked at us and said, look at what the Lord has done for them. We want the same thing for us. And so Laughter is such an important part of the Christian life that's so overlooked by most Christians, Absolutely. but it's our, it's, it's our power. It's our engine to see revival released through our lives. And so the other thing about joy is it's a choice. Come on. Like Teresa was mentioning, I didn't feel like laughing. Well, sometimes I don't feel like serving. Sometimes I don't feel like forgiving. Yeah. Come on, anybody else out there like that? But so can, I, but I don't forgive people because I feel like it. I forgive people because it's, it, I know I'm going to be blessed when I do. And so I've trained myself to make a choice by faith with the grace that God gives me to be able to do and access what God has provided so that I can be blessed. And so it's the same way with joy, with laughter. Sometimes I don't feel like it. But I do it over and over again until it like becomes so natural and I realize how blessed I am. And and what I love what you said is like, guys, it's like it's all in the Bible, but it's <laughs> yeah. all in our own lives. I mean, think about like, I mean, we have two grandkids and I was just up there with them and there was so much joy in being with them, but it's a shared experience. They felt that way too. So the joy, what, what you're talking about, joy is in his presence is because of his presence. It's because if we recognize who's with us in whatever circumstance, in looking for a house, maybe it's in a relationship that you have, maybe it's something that that you've been, you know, you've been physically uh, so wounded by other people, or it could be physically that you're hurt in any way in your body. God wants to release joy because it's His presence that He wants to overcome that pain. He wants to overcome that, and the joy immediately in the laughter gets into our system and changes the atmosphere. And so I just want to say, guys, 
whatever you're facing, there's hope today because God's joy and his fullness of joy is going to wreck you. It's going to touch you. It's going to get all over you. And it's going to start to change your DNA, change the way you think and change the way that you operate with other people. It's so contagious. I mean, it's like you can't help but laugh when other people are around. Come you on. Stand. Well, when, you know, when we're encountering God's presence, a lot of people, you know, think of God as this like angry, depressed kind of soul in God, when in fact he's rejoicing over us and dancing over us with joy. He's He's rejoicing over us, like in his presence is fullness of joy. He who's enthroned in the heavens laughs all the time. Like God's not up there like, like, you know, like look at the world situation. Oh, bummer. What are we going to do about this? It's not like God's up there singing. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. <laughs> you know, he's not up there singing some dirge. He's up there singing, I feel good, da -na 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 -na, like a Christian should. Da -na 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 -na. I feel good, so good, because I got me and you. <laughs> you know? I mean, God is happy. Yeah. You know, Teresa does these paintings oftentimes of uh, Jesus laughing and oh, smiling. Yeah. And remember that time you were in that conference? I was in and Russia, actually. The lady comes out. I, yeah, I was in Russia. So I have all my product, my books, and my all my prints of my art. And this little old lady comes up and she's, and you know, and an interpreter says, she goes, she goes, I didn't know that Jesus had tea until <laughs> I saw this picture. I want this picture. It's like people do not understand that Jesus is happy, that he's anointed with joy above his companions. It's That's so right. crazy. In fact, on that scripture, you know, in Hebrews 1, the reason why Jesus was able to do all the miracles that he did to bring a scepter of justice and release righteousness, making wrong things right, healing people, setting people free, destroying the works of the devil. The reason why he was able to do that, according to Hebrews 1, was that he was anointed with the oil of gladness, Come on. the oil of joy, which includes laughter. And so, you know, I've, I've healed thousands of people as I've just laughed over them. Now I've, you know, declared over people. I've, I've had them, you know, pick up their mat and walk, so to speak. But I've found that laughter is not only more fun to, to operate in, yeah. but it frees people up because all of a sudden they're just, they're realizing, wow, God is, is full of joy. Yes. He wants that to be in me. And when you start laughing, by the way, you release endorphins and adrenaline in your body that acts uh, acts as healing agents. Oh yeah. You know, you re you actually reduce the cortisone which is anxiety producing in your body so that you can actually have a better alignment in your entire like like biological system. Everything comes into alignment when joy is present. It's so true. <laughs> it's, it's so true. I, I we have some wonderful comments here. <clears throat> comments here. Um Vicky says she really needs more joy. Oh, you're gonna come on, take it. it. You're gonna get it today. Yes. Jessica says it. It's uh, it feels amazing uh, at Pentecost. People thought that they were drunk, but they must have looked pretty happy. Come on. <laughs> yes. Well, like what did Peter say? He said, "Hey, we're not drunk like you think we're drunk. In other words, we are drunk. We're just not drunk yes. in the way you think we are. It's only nine o'clock in the morning." Yes. But this is what was promised by the prophet Joel, that in the last days, the spirit will fill everybody, you know, and so this is the spirit of God that you're recognizing and that spirit, the spirit of God is a happy one. It, yeah. He is. And we're happy that you are on right now. Guys. Come on. There's so much joy. I can feel it in this. <laughs> I can feel it in this, this Facebook live. It says here, um, Karen says joy breaks the heavy yoke. Yes. Come on. Robin is joining us. Robin, so glad you're back with us again. Kevin from Herndon, Virginia is with us. Kevin heard about this meeting from a friend at work. Uh, joy is his portion. Come on. Come on. Kevin. So glad you're on. This is so glad. Oh, uh, Sarah is from Lebanon, Tennessee. She's on too. Wow. Okay. Oh, Welcome everybody. Yes. You know, so one of the things that I have learned over the years is it, you know, just like faith is cultivated, like we grow in measures of faith, the fruits of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit, you know, love, joy, peace, all of these things, you know, they're not just automatically, 
you know, ingrained in us so that we're like robots and we have, we ought, we operate in peace or we operate yeah. in love. These are all like cultivated over time. So when we're talking about the presence of God and revival, yes. you know, yes, we're all filled with the Holy Spirit, we're, but we're also cultivating the more that he always has for us. Yes. And so the more we grow and cultivate the, the things that God has invited us into, the more blessed we become. And so the more I learn how to love, the more fulfilled I am, the more well-being I experience, the more I learn how to love. And so I, I get tools on learning how to love better, how to connect better, how to communicate better so that my love is growing. Same thing with patience and kindness and, and all the other fruit of the spirit. Well, joy is something that must be cultivated as well. Yes. It's just not something automatic. And, and furthermore, the Holy Spirit's not going to make us forgive or love or serve or give right? By the way, we love, we thank everybody who partners with us in giving, yeah. but I, it doesn't always feel good to give. I mean, sometimes it feels a little painful to give and, or we think of, well, all this other stuff that we could do with this money, but you know, the Holy Spirit's not going to, you will give, you will love, you will forgive. No, no, no. It's a choice. Everything yeah. we do is through choice. God doesn't make us serve him on other people. God doesn't make us forgive other people. He invites us into it. And he says, Hey, forgive that person because you're going to get free. Yeah. And we say, well, I don't feel like forgiving them or they deserve pain. And he said, well, okay, well then you want to stay in bondage. You want to stay in this place of, of, you know, hurt and pain and bitterness. How's that working out for you? Okay. I guess I'll forgive, but I don't feel like it. It's okay. Just forgive. I forgive you. Whoa. I feel so much better. <laughs> you know, that the next time you get offended, it's like, I'm going to forgive you. I forgive you in advance. You know, like, So good. I love it. It's the same way with joy. It is joy. Joy is such an important part of the kingdom of God. And um, it's a neglected part too. And I, I just felt led to take you guys on an encounter right now. And in this encounter, I, I want the Lord, the Holy Spirit to help us to understand the power of his understanding of joy. So wherever you are in, except if you're driving, close your eyes. <laughs> and, um, and, and I say, Papa God, is there any reason why joy has been diminished in our life? Is there any um, core truth that uh, that we need to look at in our life that we've agreed upon that's not according to your truth on on what and who we are. So just let him come and let him speak to you now. And then Father God, let him just speak. And Father God, will you reveal to them your definition of joy? and the joy that you want for them. And he's just gonna to start to speak mm -hmm. to you right now about what joy is in his life over you and how joy can work in your life right now. Come on. Okay, you can open up your eyes. Now see, it just that just took one minute, but what God was doing is he was resetting the definition of joy in your life. And he was breaking off defeating mindsets. A lot of people feel like they can't have joy because they haven't been healed yet. They haven't had this yet or disappointments, whatever, or they think that God is angry with them. So many mis misconceptions, but joy is our empowerment, like Kevin talked about. And right now God is releasing joy to you. <laughs> so all you have to do is receive it. Like Kevin said, it's a choice. So say, Lord, I receive your empowerment to feel, to understand your joy. Yes. So when I was thinking of, of what limits my joy, sometimes I was immediately struck with the thought that I think sometimes I have this sense. It's not rational even, but it's a sense that my problem, my difficulty is bigger than God. Yes. And, and so I was reminded of Psalm 23 when David was going through the shadow of the valley of the valley of the shadow of death. And he said, I will fear no evil. And why? Because you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, along with some other things, right? But you prepare a table before me 
in the presence of my enemies. And I used to always think of that scripture as, oh, well, thanks a lot, God. You know, you're, you're setting up a table there so the enemy can come and just, you know, punch me out. But in, in actually in, in the Old Testament times, when two armies would come together and fight, the victor would set up tables on the battlefield and throw a party with the enemy's spoils. Come on. So what David was saying was, I'm not going to fear any evil because God, you've already won the battle. You've already set up the tables to party with on that battlefield. And so I was just thinking that when I when I'm focused on on God's power, God's ability, and that he can do what he says he can do, it's a lot easier for me to trust and to express that trust in childlike faith to go ahead and laugh, even though the circumstances or the environment seems like it's counter to what I'm laughing about. And, and I've found that just like Paul and, and Silas in that prison cell in Acts chapter 16, when they're like in the lowest of the dungeons there and their their feet and their head are probably in, you know, tied up in stocks and and uh, they start singing, I feel good, you know, and, and then the prison walls fall down and they're free. And, and I just want to encourage you today that whatever issue you're going through in your life, whatever circumstance you're in, whatever environment you're in, whatever you're facing, whatever, like whether it's a cancer or, or an ailment in your body, a sickness in your body that you, you haven't had breakthrough for yet, I want to encourage you, let's go ahead and sow into what we already know is true, and that is God is who he says he is, and he can do what he says he can do. And so let's laugh in expectation of what God's going to do in the reality of his good plans and purposes for our life. And, and, and let's not <laughs> yes. come on, guys. There's, come a, on. there's a link that Amber's going to put in the chat right now <laughs> for you to be in a small group of come coaches on. that know about joy, yes. about difficulties. They know if you if you need a breakthrough in any way, they're going to release his presence over you. And let me tell you, these coaches are amazing. They want to help you to grow ah. in so many different ways. So what's going to happen is that you, all you do is you follow this link you join our, our Zoom link, which means we can see you. We can talk to you in person. We can dialogue, commune. Yes, yeah. And then and then what will happen, then you're going to find out your coaches. And if you already are in a group, we're so glad that you're back. Yes. Um, but again, it's going to be a fun time for you to take just 30 minutes out of your day to get encouraged, to get filled up, to find out what God has for you, to be encouraged in the prophetic and to know that you're not alone. Super important because we want you to grow in community. Come on. And then next week, we're going to talk about not only joy in his presence, but the power that flows out of his presence to heal the sick. And so, you know, if you have any and, you know, you don't have to wait till next week to get healed, but we're going to release healing next week and, and this week as well. If you've got anything going on in your body that needs to be healed, we're going to release the presence of God over you today in your small groups you're on our Zoom community, and, and we're going to release the presence of God to give you hope today in environments that you may be in that seem overwhelming. Yeah. So we encourage you also to go to our, our globalfirealliance.org website to keep up with our events that we're not only doing in, in Orange County, Southern California, but around the globe. So yeah. you can stay connected with us, not only, you know, uh, on this Facebook live in our zoom community online, but also face to face. We want to see your face in, in, in person someday. We do. We really want to join you around the globe and, and celebrate your journey too. Um, this is so cool. We, we have, uh, again, this is Jessica and guys, you know, whatever you had in that encounter, please share that in a small group in just a second. But Jessica says, it feels like people try to crush anytime I begin to walk in his joy. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's why we need a community like here yes. to support you, to really help you to be activated and that celebrate you in your journey. Jessica. Let's face it, the enemy does not want you to laugh because the enemy knows if you laugh, if the church starts laughing, he's done because, you know, that's going to be when the power of God's going to be released even more. And the enemy does not want you to laugh. So he's going to try to steal, kill, and to destroy your joy so that he can win 
But I can tell you this, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Jesus overcame so that we can overcome and we can choose to partner with the presence of God, the spirit of God that he's given to us in this time, our comforter, our joy to make it through whatever we're going through, whatever we're facing to not just survive, but to thrive. And so I release it to you in Jesus name and take it. Yeah, (laughs) guys, like think right now, somebody that needs to understand these principles, like who could you invite next week that you go, man, this person like in a, that I feel would really benefit from this. We're trying to build a community to be with you every single week. Yes, come and on. these small group coaches are for you every week. So think about people that you can invite that need to understand what is revival? What does it mean to thrive in every area of your life and invite them? We're, we're gonna now jump off and we will see you on the Zoom link. So make sure that you copy and paste that Zoom link in your browser. And we will see you soon. Thanks for joining. Keep Bye. smiling. Keep laughing. Yep. Do it. Come on.